Hey guys, welcome to the Pulse Radiology Anatomy series. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. We love having you here. Our content here is provided by Pulse Radiology. Uh, make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Um, to start, MRI abdomen, okay, we're gonna be walking it through from a tech perspective. So, you know, patient comes in, we're gonna screen them for any contraindications in terms of MRI safety. Um, patient's going to be supine feet first, okay, head first for some for some folks as well, it doesn't matter, but uh, supine most importantly and likely feet first. Body position is going to be mid-sagittal uh, line, perpendicular to the alignment light, uh, arms above the head. So we don't want them to the sides, uh, that will just be in the field of view, so we want them above the head, okay. Two inches below the xiphoid process is the centering line. Uh, you want to basically cover from around the nipple line down to the iliac crest. Uh, in this case, to our left um, is a patient with polycystic kidney disease. So the kidneys are uh, much larger than a normal kidney. So um, you really are going to have to extend lower. And again, uh, no patient is ever the same. So uh, you got to be able to accommodate anything that you see. Uh, and you always want to make sure that you uh, cover everything. Okay, so uh, you're likely going to be using a channel cardiac coil, a body coil, um, you know, as technology advances, there are going to be several, you know, uh, advancements, whether it's in applications or, or, or equipment. Um, but you want to make sure that you're covering uh, that patient uh, in, in the nice area, you want that nice sweet spot. If you're not and you're outside the coil, you might end up getting some artifact, which we'll show on this video as well. Um, you want either them to have some leg support, okay, which will flatten out the spine, making a nice uh, cylinder of, of, uh, of the patient to scan. Uh, Earplugs uh, are, you know, okay, but you'd rather have headphones for communication there as there will be breath holding on the patient's perspective or, or the patient's, you know, um, you know, during the scan. Contrast, uh, this, this case to our left is going to be without contrast because of the kidneys, but for, for exams with and without contrast, you want to have that IV line, um, you know, started before the scan. You're likely going to be using a power, inject, power injector if you're doing arterial and venous flow um, post-contrast studies. Gating uh, is going to help with, uh, you know, breath holdings, respiratory gating, and, um, you know, it'll add, you know, a nice little, um, you know, it'll decrease the amount of motion. So uh, you usually have two choices, whether it be the patient holding the breath or through respiratory gating, okay? So on the bottom of that, uh, slide 2.2, MRI abdominal protocol. There is a typical protocol. Um, I always say no imaging center or hospital is created equally. So this can be, uh, you know, changed. It depends on the radiologists that are reading it. Uh, there's a protocol different at every imaging center, uh, but basically a, a more generalized in-depth um, breakdown of the abdominal pel uh, of the abdominal protocol. So, all right, let's jump into the images to the left here. So we're going to basically be looking at the haste view, uh, the haste sequence. Um, it shows a nice color differentiation, tissue characterization um, between, you know, water, fat, uh, and just solid organ tissue. So uh, we'll start with the coronal view. And as you can see here, we're sort of on the anterior aspect. Um, and we'll kind of come all the way through. Um, but obviously, again, to repeat that this patient has a history of polycystic kidney disease. Normally with polycystic kidney disease, you can likely get hepatic cysts as well. And in some cases, uh, pancre uh, pancreas cysts as well. So uh, we'll be checking those out as well. Um, Okay, as you can see, the liver here, we're already starting to see some cysts show up on the liver, so uh, some larger than others. You know, I did do a quick little review before I looked at these images. There's probably over 100 I counted, um, but you can see here, uh, not so bad, but, you know, a lot of small, small little cysts, uh, and we have our liver here um, that we have sort of identified. Okay, some larger cysts here. This right here is pathology. It's a cyst. It's not part of normal anatomy. Again, here and here, it's sort of deep within the um, the biliary uh, the biliary ducts. Okay, you can see all these cysts sort of scattered throughout the liver. Um, I did label a couple of these organs that I really wanted to sort of um, take a look at. So we'll start here. Gallbladder is going to be found within, you know, just inferior of the liver. 
Um, this is a NPO patient, so usually, uh, ha you know, for any abdomen study, it's, uh, you know, no eating, you know, withhold your eating for four to six hours. So your, uh, you know, your gallbladder is nice and full of um, bile, okay? Uh, here's your common bile duct uh, into the hepatic duct, okay? So as you kind of go through, you'll see that this is the stomach here. And we'll see something interesting on this case. Um, you can see that it's full of white. Um, this stomach is actually coming directly at us, so it looks like it's in cross-section. So when we're actually in the actual in the axial plane, it'll be sort of in profile. So uh, right now it's in cross-section. You can see the pancreas here as well, uh, which usually is um, pretty rich or peritoneal uh, in the abdomen, so a little bit post posterior uh, in the abdomen. Okay, kind of coming through. Uh, you have your spleen here uh, to the left side of the patient's body. Uh, this actually seems to be a little bit larger, so spleen, uh, splenomegaly here. Um, and we can definitely shout out these large kidneys uh, with, with uh, fluid-filled cysts, right kidney, left kidney. Okay. Um, so as we kind of scroll through, we'll see the pancreas pop in. And as we get sort of center, uh, one thing I did want to show is uh, the abdominal aorta versus the inferior vena cava. Um, abdominal aorta here, um, you know, how are you able to sort of differentiate which one is what on a coronal view? It's a little bit difficult because it's just not in cross-section. Um, so you're kind of seeing it in length and not in cross-section. But you can see here, abdominal aorta, and the way you sort of figure that out is obviously the vena cava is going to be coming more uh, from the right side due to the liver. So uh, you can see that IVC here, and then that automatically makes us know that this is the abdominal aorta, uh, thus the right renal artery, okay, and the left renal artery going into these cysts. So you can even see that some of these cysts are sort of impinging uh, on these renal arteries, uh, likely causing high blood pressure. So um, some definitely some definite concerns here uh, in terms of pathology. So again, just sort of coronal view, walking you through liver, okay, pancreas, stomach, okay. Uh, you have your intestines down here, okay. So let's kind of move it over to a uh, axial. So axial imaging, uh, also known as short access, is going to essentially. Um, I like to refer to a slicing bread, right? Wonder bread, think that. Um, there's a slice throughout the body for those folks that are, um, you know, prospective technologists watching. Um, axial is cutting you from head to toe, all right? So uh, from it's looking at you from uh, the top to bottom or in tech terms, superior to inferior or inferior to superior. Um, so let's sort of start from the top and work our way down. Again, we can start to see these hepatic cysts, um, you know, quite a few. Uh, some larger than others. Uh, so this is the liver. When I say hepatic, that's the uh, anatomical term for liver. Okay, we can start to see the uh, IVC here. And when I was mentioning before, uh, that's how we know because it's coming from the right side because it kind of moves into the liver as well, towards the liver. All right, so kind of scrolling back to the top, you're able to see a whole bunch of these cysts that were sort of deep within the liver that we saw on the coronal view. Now we're able to sort of localize them and see where spatially they are within within the body. So again, right kidney, left kidney, okay, stomach. Remember how I said it was pretty much in cross section uh, because it was going, it was the stomach in this position was going from anterior to posterior. So now we're able to sort of cut it from the top and see. Um, the stomach from a, diver, from, a, from a different view. The other thing I, I noticed was uh, when a patient's recumbent, uh, any food or gastric um, fluids are gonna create sort of this line of air versus fluid because they're laying flat. So think of like putting a cup on a table, um, there's gonna be air above and fluid below. So kind of, kind of neat to show that and, and outline that. Pancreas again here, um, doesn't seem like there's any cysts in this pancreas, uh, which is good for this patient. Um, and again, kind of scrolling through, we're able to see the abdominal aorta, okay, right here in the center, okay, coming up, coming up, coming up, okay, and you can kind of see them uh, branch off into the, um, to the, to the left and the right kidney, okay, vena cava to the left, some measurements on these kidneys, fluid-filled cysts, 
Okay, again, just a very general um, overview of the abdomen for any MRI techs out there, a little general uh, abdominal protocol, and just a couple, uh, you know, getting started, you know, what do you need to, um, to get this procedure done. Um, and again, like I mentioned in the beginning, whenever your, you know, patient is sort of, if you're not covering from a tech perspective, like, yes, you never want to clip, but in case you do, you always want to ensure that you're covering uh, the area of pathology. So um, this, in this case, we ran another um, axial view, haste to ensure that we covered those cysts that kind of almost ended up into the pelvis almost. So um, ensure that you're always covering uh, those cysts because you never know, you know, what you're what you're going to fall into here. So definitely make sure you're covering. Um, but again, yeah, I'm, I hope everyone sort of learned something here and uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We have some really great content coming and um, maybe throw us a comment below, you know, in, on what you saw that I didn't see. Appreciate it. Have a great day.